Now that the hype of the master has somewhat died down and the piss and vinegar have all but evaporated from the veins of the demo writers, I decided it was time to come on here and share with you my experience. Having ridden the master for over a month and going through the breaking period, I can truly attest I went through a roller coaster of mixed emotions with this wheel. As a byproduct of Bagot's slew of suspension wheels rolling off their assembly line at breakneck speed, I knew there would be some hurdles to overcome as I familiarized myself with their fourth version of a suspension wheel. Little did I know, the minor issues I was having with the Master wasn't hinged upon the initial piss poor performance of the shock or the inadequate PSI pump outfitted with this wheel. But before I get into this video, I would like to give a shout out and thanks to Free Motion for allowing me the opportunity of commandeering the Gold Master. If ever you guys want to experience the real freedom of the glide, make your journey count with Free Motion. With their line of EUCs and e-scooters, and at a more affordable price than the competitors, I suggest you take the opportunity to mosey on over and look at Free Motion Shop's arsenal of e-collectives. Because in life, nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity. With that being said, let's get into this video. There is a quote that states, A promise is always easier to make than keep. It takes commitment. I found this quote befitting as I got caught up in the hype of Bagot's newest iteration of their suspension wheel and the potential this wheel would have on the EUC community. While familiarizing myself with the master and all that it was cracked up to be or not to be, <laughs> which is the real question, little did I know that behind the scenes were inner workings that would threaten the likelihood Bagot cannot or will not be able to keep their promise of offering a more robust battery configuration by Litech for the master. And although not surprising to hear, nor the end all, it's a devastating blow nonetheless. You see, whether you see potential in this wheel or not without the Litec battery, this skeletal wheel with its high top fade is by far Bagot's most versatile and powerful wheel to grace the EUC sector. And although it appears to be equipped with the necessary components to garner those bragging rights, the vicarious liability of being a byproduct of Bagot somehow has a way of taking the wind out of our sails which unfortunately for me on this day, I could have used some wind being let out of my sail. But I digress. So as I bring you along my journey with the master, take from it what you will and make sure to do your due diligence on making it an informed decision as to whether this will is meant for you. And never let a random EUC enthusiast on YouTube tell you otherwise. Out of the box and for the purposes of those not familiar with unlocking the master, all it takes is for you to depress the motor cutoff button while pressing the power button five times. As you do so, you will hear a beep with each press. Turn the wheel off, then on. Now your wheel is unlocked. Now that the formalities are out of the way, what is there to like about the Bagode Master? For starters, it's dubbed the fastest wheel currently on the market. And although Bagode boasts it has a no load speed of 112 kilometers, my no load test indicated 98 kilometers. This according to EUC World App. Battery 100%. Low battery 27%. Now far be it for me to side eye the discrepancy between the two test results, but the fact remained I was able to clock 51 miles per hour without hitting an initial beep which up to now I have not been able to do with any wheel I currently own and off tried. But if I had to wage a bet on Bago, I wouldn't be comfortable with, with that 14 point spread. Just saying. After spending an inordinate amount of time tweaking and fine tuning the generic 80mm adjustable dampening air suspension and failing at each attempt, I was all but frustrated until I used a lifeline to reach out to Bago to inquire the proper PSI for the master suspension wheel. You see, it appeared that no amount of PSI I used to fill the shock chamber, everything I jumped off of, namely curbs and stairs, I was bottoming out. Once I was provided with this information, which by the way I feel should have been included in the manual, I was able to open up the potential this suspension wheel had. And although there are better air shocks on the market or coil springs, whichever you fancy, I was pleasantly surprised at its performance. So much so, I found myself bumping up curbs several times to get a feel for which of the 23 adjustable recoils were best suited for me. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right, 23. And for the sake of this video and your time, I'll spare you the demonstration. It's just 23 turns of the dampening dial counterclockwise. But I will tell you this guys, after 5 adjustments, the rest was just formalities. Once I locked in on the proper adjustments for me, I tried several different obstacles to jump off of. 
The first being a platform, the second a park bench, the third a picnic table, and lastly a set of stairs. Again, the difference between my initial experience with the master suspension to where it is now, <laughs> night and day. The climbing capability of the master is by far one of the best I've experienced. On tackling a hill measured at an angle of 37 degrees, this 134 volt wheel with its 3500 watt motor tore into the hill ripping out patches of grass and dirt as it blazed to the top. Coupled with the suspension, I was able to thwart several deep divots hidden in the grass when the wheel responded by bunny hopping over several of them. And although I wasn't expecting it to respond in the way in which it did, the fluid motion of the wheel in conjunction to the suspension made the experience doable, comfortable, <laughs> and downright fun. Noteworthy of mention, this particular master is the range version, so the straining noise the motor made as it scaled this hill isn't surprising. Now, as most of you all know, I am not an off-road person. I try and avoid the woods at all costs because of how messy it is and the potential health risk. But for some reason, this wheel was begging to be taken there. So with all this nakedness and the CST off-road tire, off to the woods we went. Rolling through rocky patches and tackling mud, the wheel handled itself as it should. The tire carved through muddy patches as if it were on solid ground. The flimsy mud guard served its purpose by sparing my backside and car seat from a muddy mess while the suspension absorbed a lot of the imperfections on the trail, so much so, I forgot I didn't like the woods. Imagine that. And if rolling through muddy patches wasn't enough, for shits and giggles I decided to press my luck and plow through a patch of water. The way the master parted the water and kept rolling towards infinity and beyond left little doubt in my mind that this naked wheel can to some degree handle water without a risk of a thermal runaway. For you OGs and triple OGs that have been sitting and riding these EUCs before they were seats, this part of the video will offer you nothing new up under the sun. It is more of an informative piece to those just getting into it or have little experience. The seat outfitted on the Master is hands down in my opinion the best stock seat of any wheel currently on the market. There's enough cushion and girth to provide any fanny a comfortable ride. And because of the girth, the transition from being seated to standing, again in my opinion for a newbie, is a lot easier to master. Rounding up my likables of the Master is the height clearance of the footrest. Measuring roughly 9.5 inches, give or take, the clearance of the footrest gives us urban riders enough wiggle room to comfortably straddle curbs without pedal scraping, which is a must. Well, now that I was on a roll with what's to like about the master, it's time to flip the script and share the dislikes. Off the brake and out the box, this wheel setup fell short of performing the way it was intended to. The PSI pump that was supplied for the master is useless to western riders, and the lack of instructions on the proper PSI to fill the air chamber leaves a lot to be desired. According to Bego's instructions, anyone heavier than 154 pounds need a PSI pump that can fill the air shock higher than 300 PSI. And because the stock pump maxes out at 300 PSI, anyone weighing more than 154 pounds riding this wheel is underserved. Additionally, because of the design of the air dampening, care needs to be taken when retrofitting an aftermarket pump because not all PSI pumps are designed the same. Some have retractable metal connection valve tips that cannot properly fit flush to the air stem valve, rendering this type air pump useless. As practical as these next two items are, the material and design of the mud guard and stand can become easily compromised. Caution is needed when placing the wheel on the stand. As seen in the video, the stand can become easily askewed. Also as seen in the photos, the mud guard cracks easily and depending on your air dampening setting, may cause the tire to rub up against it when popping off curbs or hitting imperfections in the roadways. Although not a dislike of mine, during the demo I hosted of the Master, there were mixed reviews on its handle. The first position of the handle measures at 28 inches, while the second position measures at 35 inches. To some, both handle positions fell short on the height. Quite frankly, barring the mixed reviews on its height, it appears sturdier than most on the market. Like the stand in the mud guard, the skeletal makeup of the master leaves a small margin that it can't withstand a crash without significant damage, which brings me to the battery casing. I won't get into the thermal insulation capacity of plastic, because no matter how you slice it or dice it, plastic is a poor heat conductor. As you can see, the battery casing for the masters are made of smoked plastic. Lastly, the Samsung 50E battery that's outfitted on this particular master is not designed for continuous speed, but more so for range. And even in knowing this, the range in my opinion isn't the best. 
right in between the high 20s and 30s with a burst of 40 plus miles per hour thrown in for good measure. At my weight of 135 pounds geared up, I was able to get shy of 50 miles, more like 47-ish. In closing, it would appear here recently these newer EUCs rolling out on the market are being outfitted with more powerful motors. And I can't help but to wonder whether the battery configuration for these high-end motors can withstand the demand of Western riders, because truth be told, we are a different breed. Although the Master is the first 134 volt wheel and dubbed the fastest EUC currently on the market, can it really be dubbed the fastest when the current makeup doesn't support that claim now that the Molly Cell is off the table? Or better yet, is it safe to say now that the Molly Cell is off the table? Just saying. With that being said, we've come to that part of the video where you guys know what time it is. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, good, bad, or indifferent. So until next time guys, 